I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And in this episode of our continuing series of how to use on-farm culture to improve mastitis treatments, we're going to start with the initial steps of reading the agar plates. Now remember, the purpose of performing on-farm culturing is not only to grow bacteria, but it's to ensure that our diagnosis is correct so that we can determine if antibiotic treatment will be helpful and will improve the outcome of that mastitis case. In this segment, we're going to begin to discuss how to read the plates. And to do that, we first need to determine if A, we have any growth on the plates, B, if that growth that we see on the plates is likely the cause of the mastitis infection or is perhaps there from another reason such as contamination either of the milk sample during collection or contamination of the agar plates during the process of inoculation. So the earliest that we want to read the plates is after 24 hours of incubation. And the very first question that we ask when we look at the plates is is there any evidence of bacterial growth on these plates at all? Now that sounds simple, but sometimes it's not as simple as it seems. One of the things that we need to differentiate sometimes is small clots of milk from the mastitis um, itself. Sometimes there's little clumps of fat. And then sometimes, like seen in this plate, there's small pits in the agar that if we don't look carefully enough, we may confuse with bacterial growth when in fact they're just uh, pits in the agar. So the first thing to do is to look at the plates. Then we have to decide if there's non-significant growth. And non-significant growth is really means we've got a few colonies on that plate, but we're making the diagnosis that those colonies aren't the cause of the mastitis infection. Now there's no firm rule on this, and this is a case where, where in a di diagnostic laboratory, a microbiologist with great skill uh, is often very useful. But one of the thumb rules that I often use for making the diagnosis uh, in an on-farm culture laboratory is to count the number of colonies present on the plate. And typically, we would call it non-significant growth is if there's somewhere between one and five total colonies on that plate. This is just a thumb rule. For example, if you have three or four colonies that you're sure are Staph aureus, we would consider that a good diagnosis. But if you've got two or three colonies of E. coli, or as shown here, one colony on the strep, segment of a triplate, in most instances we wouldn't be confident that there's enough colonies there to make that diagnosis and we would typically call that non-significant growth. This is a tricky diagnosis and one of the things we'll recommend uh, in both diagnostic laboratories and when we're doing on-farm culture is if you think you have non-significant growth Put the lid back on that plate, put the plate back into the incubator, and re-examine that plate 18 to 24 hours later. At that point, you'll be much more confident in making that diagnosis. Now, the occurrence of no growth or non-significant growth is common. In a diagnostic laboratory and in um, on-farm culture laboratories, Typically, about 20 to 40 percent of agar plates set up from milk samples of cows with clinical mastitis result in no growth or non-significant growth. This doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. This occurs because we detect mastitis based on the observation of symptoms of inflammation. That inflammation, the purpose of it, is to kill bacteria. And in many instances, we detect the case after the bacteria are gone. These are the cases that are often candidates for the no antibiotic treatment um, strategy, which you can refer to other episodes 
to um, get more background on. So if growth is, a, is observed on the plates, the next things that we have to consider are how many different types of colonies are present on that plate. And we determine the types of colonies by observing what the colonies look like. So we can look at the color of the colonies, we can look at the shape of the colonies, and we can look at the effect on the surrounding auger. Some of the colonies will sometimes clear the auger so it looks clear around them. We call that hemolysis. So we use these different colony types to determine if the plate has likely been contaminated. Our rule for contamination is that if there are greater than two different types of colonies on the plate, that plate is likely contaminated. And that contamination could occur during obtaining the aseptic sample or during handling and inoculation of the media. The plate that we're showing here is a great example of a contaminated plate. We have three different types of colonies present on this plate. We've got some small white colonies, a couple of medium gray colonies, and some large yellow colonies. This is a good example of three different colony types, which indicates that's likely the result of contamination. It's pointless to try to make any sort of diagnosis with a contaminated sample. The contaminated plate simply can't be used for diagnosis. Our goal on our farm should be to have less than 5% of the samples result in contamination. So let's say we have less than uh, three different types of colonies. We now are looking at the plate and trying to make a diagnosis of if we have a true intramammary infection. And these true intramammary infections usually have greater than five colony forming units on the plate. And um, here we're showing you a couple of examples of excellent growth. We've got a biplate that has solid growth of a gram positive organism. So many colonies on the red side. And we've got another plate where we've got a biplate with solid growth of a gram negative organism. In both of these instances, we've got one colony type and we're very confident in reaching a diagnosis of our mastitis pathogen. All right, let's sum up our initial observation of these plates with just a few thumb rules for interpretation. First of all, never use a contaminated plate to make a diagnosis. Remember, a contaminated plate is defined as a plate that contains more than two colony types. So three or more different types of colonies on that plate. Those plates simply need to be thrown out and we cannot arrive at a diagnosis. Secondly, if there's just a couple of colonies of a single colony type on the plate, let's say somewhere between one and five colonies, then we're going to likely in most instances consider that to be the same as a no growth. We're going to call that non-significant and in most instances we would then use a treatment protocol that would apply to a no growth case. So in our next episodes we're going to move into making specific diagnoses of reading the different types of bacterial growth that occur on these different types of augers. Thank you.